Hey folks, this is Kalani. Welcome back to the Sanctum of Domination raid guide for Normal and Heroic. This time we'll be taking down Sylvanas Windrunner. Her first major ability is Windrunner. Sylvanas will teleport all over the place, do a couple of flips, and fire off a rapid assault of abilities in very quick succession. Desecrating Shot covers a good chunk of the room in swirls that deal a lot of damage if you stand in them. This can have various patterns, so you need to stay on your toes and dodge the swirlies. She also flings a couple of shadow daggers at random players which deals heavy damage over time so your healers need to keep these players alive. And then Withering Fire deals damage to random players and applies the Barbed Arrow debuff. This deals damage over time, it stacks and it doesn't have a duration so it lasts until you remove it with a different ability. One key factor for this ability, even though it looks like Sylvanas is hopping around all over the place, her hitbox actually remains stationary, so melee players do not have to chase after her at all, they can just kind of hit the air where she was and you'll still be doing damage. Her next very important ability is Domination Chains. Sylvanas fires off several Domination Arrows and big swirls appear around the platform. The swirls deal a lot of damage so you have to dodge them but after the impact a Domination Arrow will appear. These arrows chain the closest player to them and constantly pull that player toward the arrow. The strength of the pull increases the longer the arrow is left alive and it also deals damage over time. Getting chained by a domination arrow is also the only way to remove your barbed arrow stacks, so anyone with high stacks will want to actively try to get chained. Your entire raid needs to swap to these domination arrow adds when they pop up so your raid can freely move and dodge mechanics. On Heroic Mode, the arrows have a small circle of calamity around them. Basically, if the player chained to an arrow gets too close to the arrow they are chained to, they instantly die, so even more reason to nuke the arrows down as quickly as possible. Sylvanas will also use Veil of Darkness. She disappears briefly and reappears somewhere on the platform and creates a very large shadowy AoE. If you get hit by this AoE, you'll take a lot of damage and get a Healing Absorb debuff, so healers need to watch out for that and heal it up as quickly as possible. There's also a tank swap mechanic to watch out for called Wailing Arrow. The boss targets the tank with aggro and after a short delay she fires the Wailing Arrow, dealing a large amount of damage to the tank and raid wide AoE damage that is reduced the further away you are. So the tank with Wailing Arrow just needs to take it away from the group. And her last ability in this phase is Ranger's Heartseeker. The boss gains stacks of Ranger's Heartseeker every 5 seconds, and when she gets to 3 stacks, she can unleash a triple burst of Ranger's Heartseeker into her target. This deals a bunch of damage and applies a damage over time effect, so tanks should use a cooldown and healers need to make sure the tanks stay alive. When the boss gets down to 80% health, you'll enter the transition phase. Sylvanas is cloaked in her Banshee Shroud and takes 99% reduced damage. She also fires off a Domination Arrow for every player in your raid, so everyone will get chained by Domination Chains. You need to DPS these arrows down ASAP because she will also use Rive. Sylvanas starts flinging pieces of debris across the room. You can see where they're going thanks to the black lines and the actual chunks are pretty big, so just avoid the black lines and avoid the debris flying across the room. This also spawns a bunch of swirlies that deal a lot of damage, so you need to dodge those as well. Sylvanas will also start using Banshee Wail. This is a small circle AoE around each player that deals a lot of damage, so you have to spread out quickly so you don't splash each other. It will also interrupt any spells you're casting, so be sure to stop casting as well. This ability also deals more damage the lower health you have, so healers need to make sure everyone is topped off before this ability happens. All you need to do is survive until Sylvanas flies away and Jaina teleports you onto the Jailer's Chains. This is going to be phase 2. You need to chase down Sylvanas by running along the chains. Jaina and Thrall will be helping you out by building bridges so you can cross safely. The bridges tend to have holes in them so watch your step as you cross. In this phase, Sylvanas will try to cast a Ruin. If she finishes this cast, your entire raid will die, so you have to interrupt it every time Sylvanas tries to cast it. This also means if you aren't fast enough across the chains or bridges, you won't be in range to interrupt her, so you have to keep up with Sylvanas as she retreats. She will also cast Haunting Wave. This ability sends out lots of little black waves in a big circle. These waves deal damage and push you back, so you have to avoid them, otherwise you might just get pushed off the chains. She also still uses Withering Fire and Shadow Dagger, so be ready for those bursts of damage. Banshee Whale will also be in this phase, so spread out as best you can with the limited available space, and she will also use Veil of Darkness. This is going to be much harder to dodge in this phase, so healers need to be extra ready to deal with any Healing Absorb debuffs if some players get hit. 
There are also a bunch of more sworn ads in this phase that you'll come across. You have to kill the more sworn to let Jaina and Thrall create more bridges so you can continue to chase Sylvanas. The ads aren't going to make it easy though. More sworn vanguards will cast a cursed might, which increases their damage done, their movement speed, and their total health, and it stacks, so you need to interrupt this and kill them before these stacks get out of control. On heroic mode, vanguards also use unstoppable force. They slam the ground and deal damage within 5 yards, so don't stand on the tanks with aggro. More sworn hope breakers will cast destabilize on random players. This deals damage over time, reduces movement speed, and applies a nasty healing absorb on the target, so interrupt it as often as you can. On heroic mode, hope breakers also use enflame. Their movement speed is increased by 100%, and their melee attacks deal extra fire damage and raid-wide AoE damage at the same time. More Forged Soul Judges will use Crushing Dread. This is a magic debuff that deals damage within 5 yards of the target, so you should spread out when you get this, but the longer you have the debuff, the more damage it will deal. You can dispel the debuff to remove a stack, but the actual effect will just jump to another player. You can only remove this debuff for good after the Soul Judge has been killed. On Heroic, Soul Judges also use Lashing Strike. This deals heavy damage to your tank and applies a nasty damage over time effect that stacks and can't be mitigated, so more tank damage to watch out for. More Forged Summoners will summon Decrepit Orbs. These orbs increase damage done by 40% every 6 seconds and it stacks, so you want to nuke these down quickly when they pop up. When they die, they explode for a bit of raid-wide damage. On Heroic, Summoners also cast Curse of Lethargy. This deals shadow damage and more damage over time and reduces the target's movement speed for 3 seconds. Each time the curse is cast, it increases the duration of future casts by 1 second, so dispel these quickly to reduce overall damage. And then the last ad you'll come across is the more forged Goliath. They gain stacks of fury, which increases their damage and attack speed when they hit the same target, so your tanks will need to juggle these ads to keep the stacks low. On heroic mode, more sworn ads also deal constant raid-wide damage if no players are within 50 yards, so you'll need to get to the ads quickly or your healers are going to struggle. So move along the chains, help Jaina and Thrall build bridges, interrupt and intercept Sylvanas, and when you've gone far enough, Jaina will be able to portal you into the Arbiter's Room where you'll start Phase 3. In this phase you'll have four platforms to work with, you can jump between the platforms by running toward the edge that will bump you over to the next platform. The boss will still use Wailing Arrow, so the tank marked with that will need to hop to a different platform to reduce the damage your raid takes. She will also still cast Veil of Darkness, and it's going to cover pretty much the entire platform, so you'll need to hop platform to avoid that AoE as well. And Sylvanas will also use Banshee Scream. It's more or less the same thing as Banshee Wail, so you need to spread out as best you can to avoid splashing the damage across multiple players. She will also periodically throw out Shadow Daggers. You can actually see the small black lines which note where those daggers will fly, so try to avoid the lines when possible. And then the big problem in this phase is going to be Banshee's Bane. This is a magic debuff that is applied by various abilities. It deals damage over time and it can stack. When this debuff is dispelled, you'll drop a purple puddle on the floor. If anyone runs over that puddle, they soak it up and get the debuff. So you can move the puddles around by having players pick them up, then dispel them to put them in a better place. The boss will also fire off Bane Arrows. These are big purple swirlies that deal damage if you get hit, but they also leave a Banshee's Bane puddle on the floor. Banshee's Heartseeker is more or less the same as Phase 1. The boss saves up stacks and then uses them to fire off a quick triple shot into the tank, but in Phase 3 it also applies Banshee's Bane, so the tanks will be dropping those puddles as well. On Heroic Mode, she will also use Banshee's Fury. This deals damage to every player over 4 seconds, and after 4 seconds, anyone with a Banshee's Bane debuff will also explode, dealing raid-wide damage for each stack of Banshee's Bane. So basically, when the boss casts this, no one can have that Banshee's Bane debuff, otherwise you'll probably die. And to top everything off, Sylvanas will also cast Raze. This basically destroys the platform she's currently on by disabling the jumping mechanic so you can't get off the platform, and it fills the entire platform with a nasty AoE that will kill anyone left behind. When the boss starts casting this, you have to leave the platform and you can't go back to it. The goal in this phase is to kill Sylvanas before you run out of platforms. You will also probably want to collect the vast majority of active Banshee Bane debuffs and puddles on the platform that's about to get destroyed, so they don't fill up your remaining platforms and remaining space too quickly. 
It's also probably going to be a good idea to have players pick up those puddles if they're in a bad spot, run them over to the edge of one of the platforms and get dispelled so the puddles aren't in the middle of your raid the entire fight. And that's all you should need to take down Sylvanas Windrunner on Normal and Heroic. A big thank you once again to Lucid and Nascent for the Phase 2 and Phase 3 footage. And that's it, every boss covered, so you should be well prepared for the entire raid. Thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always I will see you next time.